Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Board Game Backwards, where we play board games having never read the rules. I'm Shay. And I'm Brian. And today we are going to be playing Sky Tier Horde. I understand that there is a regular sky, a regular sky tier, but the one I got my hands on is Horde. So Very cool. I know nothing about any of the Sky Tier games. I know nothing as well. So, I've never even heard of them. Yeah, no. I actually, someone just sent this to me from Reddit for free, uh, just to be nice. And so, yeah, I'd never heard of it either. When I searched Sky Tier on BGG, wow, there, there's... <laughs> There's, there's a, a lot. Holy smoke. So there's regular Sky Tier, and that came out in 2020. Uh, but then there's Horde, Outsiders, Lyothin, Kuromo, Towlet, Nupton, Ashen Pass, Winter Deep, Storm Seer, Into Ashes, The Beat, The Breach, like so many. Wow. But and the it, difference, though. The original came out in 2020? Yeah, and then all of these so came out in 2020. Years? All of them came out in 2020. Oh wow! But my thing is, it almost looks like all the ones I just read are like packs or something to it. Are like they if like I, expansion? If I look at images, they're, yeah, they're they're those are all expansions. Huh. Whereas Sky Tier Horde is like a standalone; it's its own thing. Huh. So, cool. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to. We'll look once we we've gone through this and we go into our review part of the episode. We can look at the differences. Okay, so Sky Tier Horde is rated a seven point six. So that's that's great. That's that's that. I mean, just about everything we do is about that. Yeah. Um, came out this year, twenty twenty three. Uh, and it is 3,500 overall. So it's quite a ways down the list, yes. which honestly, as we know, doesn't really mean yeah, diddly. Yeah. Right. Uh, so 7.6. So, I mean, I expect it to be decent. Uh, it's one to three player, which is really odd. Yes. This is the first game I've ever encountered that's one to three. Yeah. Uh, 30 minute playing time, which is um, I look forward to personally. And the weight is 2.59. Okay. So should be a good time, hopefully. Absolutely. Look at, the, so, look at the box art. The box art is sweet. It makes me want to play. So uh, the box says the Castle Defense Card Battler. All right. So whatever that means. Castle, like tower defense-y sort of, I guess. Yeah. Um, let me mention... It is designed by Giacomo Neri and Ricardo Neri and published by Sky Tier Games. So let's open the box, see what we're working with. I'm totally digging the artwork. This, I mean, it looks simple. Just m mainly a lot of cards and then a couple tokens. So let's pull it all out. Okay. <laughs> So we'll leave the player aid cards in, of course. Now, uh, we have a very large deck of purple-backed cards. Then we have a smaller deck of green-backed. Um, we'll have to see, based on the cards, what we think that means. Then we have a very large deck of gold-backed cards. And those are all the cards. Oh, wait. And then we have locations. And it looks like we have five location cards. Um, yep. Uh, we have life tokens, plus and negative life tokens, a couple of flag tokens, and then a swirly looking token. Um, we also have small plus and minus heart, plus and minus sword and plus and minus shield. And then a number track from 0 to 10. And that's everything. Those are all the components. Okay. So now that we've examined the components, we can go in and try to come up with some Figure rules. Figure things out. Yeah. Okay. I'm noticing that there are three colors of cards. There's 
Blue, red, and green. I'm wondering if... Specifically with uh, what the gold deck? The gold deck. The gold deck. I'm wondering if there's one color per player because it's up to a three-player game. Mm. There's well, we three can... distinct colors. It almost makes it seem like it's three separate decks. Yeah, you could totally be right on that. So I'm going to separate out green, blue, and red. Good idea. Now, I'm kind of thinking that the 0 through 10, I'm almost wondering if it's like a wave tracker and we have to survive 10 waves or something. I'm wondering that too. I also see here that on the cards in the top corner, there's a number. I'm wondering if it can only be played if you're past that wave. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, like certain, certain cards can be played on... Wave one or three, something you have to wait till seven. Right. Okay, now, with the purple deck, there are a, a, a few cards that don't have a number at the top left at all. Uh-huh. Or a symbol at the top right. and Or like a box, a border. They stand alone from all of the other purple cards. So I'm, I, I'm wondering... If they're just kind of like a base. But yeah, we do have some unique cards. <clears throat> There's also these. I'm guessing these are locations that we're trying to defend. And in the corner of each one, it has a health points. I'm guessing that because it's a castle defense. These are what we're defending. It starts with 20 hit points. And when our hit points reach zero, we're out. Uh, the green backed cards have the same thing. They also have non-bordered non yes all, all, most of the green cards refer to portals i think these are portals here's my guess the portals come become active throughout the game we can destroy the portals so that fewer minions are coming through the portals to attack mm -hmm. our castle Mm -hmm. So the fewer portals there are, the fewer minions can come. But if they start to accumulate, you get overrun. You're going to get wrecked. Because in the bottom corner, there's a health for the portal. And then there's always text that says, when this portal is destroyed, you know, reveal the next portal card. So, so I guess maybe there's just one at a time. But hmm. each portal has a an ability that comes with it. Do you, there's that that bottom left number, the the plus number. Do you have any idea on what that might indicate? I don't. I do not know. Could it be monsters that come out of the portal? Maybe. Maybe it's the number of cards we flip over, yeah. Could be. Yeah, I think with the locations we can just pick one randomly and that'll be our castle that we're defending. Pay one mana. What's mana? I don't know. Because there's no mana tokens that I can see, right? Yeah, there's that number at the top left, and I, I don't know what that's supposed to indicate, really. Because we have our health. We have our, um, like, attack. And most of my cards, they're one through four, but I have a couple that are 25. 1 through 25, they're numbered? No, I'm saying most of them are 1 through 4, but uh -huh. I have 1 that's 25. See that? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, 2. I have 2 that are 25. I don't two think I have any that are that high. 2 behemoths. So, yeah, I, I don't know what that means. Maybe that, maybe, maybe that isn't round that you can play. Maybe that's mana. Behemoth costs one less mana to play for each card in your discard pile. There you go. That's mana then. Yeah, it's got to be. That's mana. How do we know how much mana we have? It sounds like there's lanes. Because this card says a monster in a lane gains stuff. Here are my thoughts. After reading a couple of cards. Mm -hmm. So... There's lanes, right? We have our portal, one portal at a time we're going to play with. Um, and the baddies are going to come out of the portal 
into like a um like a battle area mm -hmm. but then we can engage foes i had a card that said if you know if you're if bushido of the sakura is engaged he deals one damage to the portal so you can pull enemies from the like battle line to engage you specifically in your units mm -hmm. and then you would like select a defender to defend against anybody who's engaged with you then there's combat mm -hmm. you know they attack you you attack them um and anybody who is in the battle line and isn't engaged with a player any damage they deal goes straight to the cat with all of these monster cards that I just noticed is some cards have a symbol on the right, like a sword on the right side of the card. Uh -huh. Some have a sword on the left. Uh, some have lightning bolts on the left. Some have three on the left. I don't have anything that has... Some have a lightning bolt on the right. So I suppose that the the right or the left could also mean it's adjusting the card to its neighbor. Like if it has a sword on the left, then it's giving its neighbor an extra attack. And then some of them have, you know, a lightning bolt and it says right here, treachery. If the boosted monster is engaged, move it to the rightmost free lane. So it's, it's boosting a monster and not itself. So it seems to me like it's, they're influencing the neighbor. These portal cards, they have numbers around their circle. Yeah. So what is that number supposed to indicate? I don't know. It is a mystery. Okay, this references alliance phase. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I saw it. That reminds me. There's there's a horde phase. This one refers to being engaged again. There's a horde phase. Yeah. So summon all cards in the outsider pile at the end of the horde phase. So I'm guessing alliance phase is when we go. Horde phase is when and they go. They go. Okay. Let's say there's five lanes, four lanes. Just for the sake of progress. Mm hmm. What do you think? Five or four? Um, let's go with four. Cause okay, there's four lanes. The the portal cards they have four numbers usually on them, so maybe that's supposed to mean something. Let's reveal the monsters, and then we place our guys, and then we fight. Okay. And who attacks first? Do the monsters attack us, and then we have a chance to retaliate, or? I don't know. I'm not sure if it would make much of a difference. Like, I don't know if we get a defense bonus versus an attack bonus. Well, I mean, if they attack us first and they kill one of our units, then we don't get to attack with that unit. So. Right. Attackers have the advantage. Yeah. They attack first. We have a chance to retaliate. Round over. New round. I just feel like. It'd be more challenging. We, yeah. <laughs> but there's die. two of us versus one of them. We'll win yeah. by the power of teamwork. By the power of Grayskull. By the power of Grayskull. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, go ahead and draw five, six, five, four, five, six, six, six. Mm. Five cards? <laughs> sure, yeah. Five? Okay. The only thing we haven't figured out is mana. Well, I felt the only I feel like we haven't figured out most things. I figured we There's figured out. a lot of icons that don't make any sense to me. Oh, like what? Um, oh, like the ones on the monsters? Like if you look at our cards, some of our bottom symbol swirls are white, some of them are gray. Mm. The monsters, they're like we don't know exactly what that plus for the portal. We don't know what that plus means. If it does mean monsters or not, we don't know how yeah, the lanes are done. That's, that's monsters because it says minion. Each minion gains plus two health. Right, but we don't know if that number is it, or if it's like if you kill it, that's mana that each of us gains, and maybe the numbers around the circle indicate four lanes and the amount of monsters in each lane. Like, there's a lot of different things that could it could be. 
and I don't know what that to the right of the number at the bottom, the swirl with the dot versus the swirl versus the half swirl, what that means. I don't know what the the Roman numerals mean if it's supposed to go one, two, three in order. <laughs> There's a lot I, I have questions about. Mm, I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I don't think we're going to get those answers. No. The dark versus light swirl, I say we ignore that. I Well, most of it we ha- kind of have to ignore. Yes. I'm just saying there's there's a lot that I, I look forward to, to understanding. Yes. But, yeah, that is a mana thing. So I think the reward for reducing this portal to zero is we get plus three mana. Maybe that's how we gain mana. We don't get additional mana per turn. We get mana when we destroy portals. Mm-hmm. So whatever our like base starting mana value is, it stays that way until we defeat a portal. Right. We just we have no idea how that's charted unless this one through ten is supposed to be like a mana tracker. And the mana is shared. Maybe the plus three is just plus three mana as a group. No. Because if you're playing with two players, then it's uneven. Which I guess isn't necessarily a problem, but I say we just both gain three mana. Just how do we track it? I don't know. <laughs> right. What if this is a mana tracker? Well, that's what I said earlier. Yes, well, what if you're right? <laughs> <laughs> right, but there's only the one. Yeah, so we have the same mana. Yeah, it's shared. Yeah. So you're going back to what I was saying earlier. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember that? And then you said, well, how could we share it? Well, it's not shared like... Like if our mana is four, you can play a card worth two mana and I can play a card worth two mana. Mm-hmm. I thought that, That's what I thought you meant when you said shared. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. If it's four, then we both have four. So we get the chance... See, but here's, say we've used three mana. Say we start the game at 10, right? So now we're at seven. I want to play a a card that's worth two mana, but you want to play a card that's worth three. Then how do we, does it go down by three? Whatever the highest mana value is. I don't understand what you're asking. Because we, if, if this tracker is to track mana then it's going to go down and up based on using mana or gaining mana right no so this is a mana tracker that tells us how big our mana pool is total and then on our turn we can play cards we have that much to use up to our mana pool that makes sense so if our mana pool is five i can play as many cards as i can until i reach five mana that makes sense I think that's a good idea. That's typically how games like this are mm-hmm. played. Yeah, I feel you like know. that would have to... That's the only way that makes sense, because, yeah, like we were thinking earlier, just other ways didn't make any sense. Yeah. Um. So we just need to decide what we start at. Let's start at two. If we start at two, we'll get wrecked. Because if this card gives us five monsters... <laughs> We well, I don't only think be it able does. To play I, don't, two. I don't think it does give us five monsters. I mean, I almost feel if those are directions, I feel like there'd be like a, I don't know, like a dice roll that sh- shows which lane. And if you get that lane, you get three. And that's unlucky. And then the other one, ones, you get like one or two. But there's not a dice. Right. But then we so can just out. pick what lane we want to go to. What do you mean? Instead of rolling I mean, a what, dice. What would keep us from just always picking the one? Just risking the larger lane attacking our castle before we're able to kill both the monster and reduce all the health in the portal down to zero. Because if we don't do that by the end of the round, then all the remaining monsters are going to weaken the castle. Hmm... I don't know. I just feel like if if we pick the one every time, yes, there's going to be guys accumulating over time, but then we can always just play our guys to that lane and kill them all. 
it's two versus one. Right, but if I'm looking, I look at my cards, the highest attack value that I have is two. So if we say we, we start, at, uh, start off at two mana, which I think if, if there were actually five monsters would obviously be too low. Mm -hmm. But if we could each only play one attack card, say I play one with an attack value of two and you play one with an attack value of one and the monster was, we were lucky, fortunate enough for it to be level three. We killed one monster, didn't take off a single health point from the portal. And now there's four other monsters left to attack the castle. Yeah, I don't think we get five per turn. So, but Because you're right, like it, it wouldn't make sense. It would be way too overpowered. So then how many monsters? Why are there different numbers on every portal? What is that supposed to indicate? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's not portal. Well, since we have no idea, how many lanes do we want to... How many did we talk about earlier? I think like four. Four. Okay, do we want to do just one monster per lane? dive in let's do it so that we're not here forever okay so this one is a predator or an attachment yentar minions gain plus three health attach hardened skin to the strongest monster attachment monster gets plus one armor plus one health so the strongest monster is the Stone Titans. We have two. Is it the strongest monster? Because it has six worth of stats. This guy has seven worth of stats. But for strong, are we talking health or are we talking attack? Well, it's both. Total. I'd say, I'd say you add it up. Add health okay. and attack to get strength. That's what I'd guess. Sure. Well, when we defeat an enemy, do we gain... A mana? A mana? Is that a temporary mana? Like, like just that turn? Or is that a permanent mana? I don't know, because I don't get how some of them at the top left, it, they just have a number. Yeah. And it's not this even a mana... Attachment. It's not even a mana symbol. But I think there are a lot of monsters that have... Look, like this is a monster. It's not an attachment, but it doesn't have the mana symbol at the top left. It just has a, a Roman numeral. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what that's supposed to indicate. Hmm. So he has plus one armor, plus one health. And the portal says each minion gains two health. Wow. We're gonna get crushed. Well, I don't. Th I don't think two mana's enough. That's for sure. Three, three. All right. Okay. Do your thing. Um. Let's. Uh... All right. I'm gonna play my Underwood Dryad in the center lane. And it says when I play, so would that be when I lay it down? Uh-huh, yeah. So it says mutiform two. So repeat two times, I gain two health and two attack. Or. Two health or two attack. Um, or one and one. See, the problem is if they attack first... Oh, no, because he doesn't have a high... They don't have a high attack. That's the good thing. That's the good news. So, so These guys both say that they get plus one armor and their neighbor gets plus one armor. Fight. Stone Titan what do you mean? Like the cards damage say to that? the castle. Wow. Where does it say they gain? Stone Titan and its neighbors gain plus one armor. Mm -hmm. And then these swords 
does that mean that one gets an extra attack and that one gets an extra attack? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so, though. But, I mean, that would get out of hand way too quickly. But, you know, there's like we were talking about earlier, there's those monsters with the lightning that give its partner, like it activates, it does something. Like there was a card that specifically said it influences its neighbor. Yeah, but that was a separate ability. But we, if if the lightning symbol on the side of the card affected the neighbor, then wouldn't we assume that the sword on the side would also affect the neighbor? Well, I, I don't know what those do. I don't know if it, those affect the neighbor. Because otherwise, it's like, what are they doing there? Because there are some cards that have three swords on the side. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I say it it it... it, it Affects, affects them how? It gives them a bonus. So like plus one to their attack. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I know it's ridiculous, but that's what it seems like it would be. So the card I'm currently facing off has three attack. I only have two health. I don't want to die. Then I guess you got to give yourself two health. Right. Two health, and I only have one attack. And he has two armor. Very true. Okay, well, that's um, that's still only two mana that you spend. Are you going to spend one more? Um, I don't know. I don't have anybody. Well, no, I don't. I don't have anybody that's worth one. Play Bushido of the Pioni. And I'm going to attach Raitening Naginata to him. Uh, he has one armor, so he blocks one damage every turn. Okay. Bad guys attack. Mm -hmm. So he's going to attack him. He deals three damage, but he blocks one, so he takes two damage. So you have one health left. So I have one health left. He's going to attack him for three damage. Mm-hmm. So I have, so you have one, one left health. as well. And he doesn't have anybody blocking in his lane so he attacks the castle directly mm -hmm. for four stone titan deals two damage to the castle so it would be four plus two but it also seems like regardless of who's facing off it seems like it always does that so I'm wondering if on the other stone titan that you went up against oh yeah he also it's attacks. also attacking the castle okay so, minus eight. So, a third of the castle's health is done in the first round. <laughs> this is looking good. But now we get to retaliate. So, I'm going to attack yeah. Ugly Man. Stone Titan. I have minus two health, and he gets a plus three if he's missing health. Plus nice. two, so I deal five damage. Minus one is four damage. And it's at four, so you, you and it's at kill five. it. And it's at five. Bushido of the Sakura. Sakura. All right. Combat. The monsters kill us all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he deals three damage to this guy. Yep. And he Luckily, he's at four armor. health. He kills this guy. Your Koi Shadows is dead. Um, But he also has Trample, doesn't he? Trample, so any excess damage, it goes to the castle. So he has one health, he does three damage. So that's two yep. damage to the castle. We're half health after round two. Then this guy attacks him. He's got four and he has two health, so he's dead. But he's engaging with this guy, so he heals one damage to the portal. Okay, okay. Nice. Okay. And then uh, both stone titans deal two damage mm. to the castle. 
Okay, one more round and we should be out of our misery. <laughs> Minus 14 to 20. Okay, okay let's, uh, let's whip out some new monsters. All right, combat. Oh, you didn't even do a... Oh, it's a tower. It's got two health. And that's it. That's all it is. Two health. No attack. Okay. So combat, he kills him. Yep. And he kills... Our Look, tower. We're, we're dead, okay? We're dead. <laughs> Game, Game over. Us. <laughs> oh my gosh. Quite successful. All right, so we played through with our rules. That was probably the most brutal playthrough of our rules that we've <laughs> ever done. Like I was, I was honestly like pissed. I was just frustrated. <laughs> well, we we like made it so hard. I mean, we didn't have to send out three guys every. We didn't have to do a lot of things. Every turn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. So let's just. Oh, I just want to read the rules so bad. I'm yeah, excited to read the rules. The rules. <laughs> I hope this game is awesome and really fun when we learn how to play. But let me just say there is a lot of iconography which bothers me a little bit what do you mean just all the different icons that we have to know what they mean in order to be able to play the game well i feel like a lot of them are straightforward but all the ones that i mean it's not as bad as the castles of burgundy there is a lot of icons in that they have to understand what they mean yes. but for not knowing, at least that game still explained what each symbol basically meant on the board. Yeah. Well, we pretty much knew what everything... No, we I didn't. Mean, not everything, but I feel like we we knew 70% of the symbols. You know what? The health we'll symbol, see. the mana symbol, the attack I... symbol, the armor symbol. Like, we got yeah. all that stuff. The only thing is, we don't understand what portals do. We don't understand what the lanes mean. And the mana. All right, let's get into this book. Uh, uh, there's normal, hard, and painful. So we can do normal is the incomplete swirl. Alliance players lose when the castle is destroyed or any player's alliance deck runs out of cards. Alliance players win at the end of, a, of the turn in which the final outsider stage has been destroyed. So our mission is to kill the outsider? I guess. He's only got four health. So there's probably, so the outsider is summoned only once the first portal stage is destroyed. Destroy the first portal. To destroy this, the portal, some of your allies and spells must attack it instead of fighting the monsters. Once the stage one portal is destroyed, the stage one outsider will be summoned on the lanes. After you defeat the stage one outsider, the stage two outsider will come back for revenge. Defeat it again and survive until the end of the turn to claim victory over the horde. In order to survive, make sure your castle is not destroyed and your deck does not run out of cards. So the game is played over a series of turns until the player either win or lose. Each turn has seven phases. That's a lot of phases. That is a lot. Phase one, refresh phase. So you gain mana to play cards and ready allies. Phase 2, Horde Phase, summon a new wave of monsters. Phase 3, Alliance Phase, play Alliance cards and use their abilities. Phase 4, Treachery Phase, a treachery card empowers the Horde. Stage 5, Fight Phase, allies and monsters fight or strike the castle or portal. Phase 6, Pillage Phase, minions force you to discard cards from your deck. Phase 7, End Phase. Check if the outsider is destroyed and start a new turn. The four minions are a special kind of monster threatening your resources, which are represented by the Alliance deck. During the pillage phase, the healthier the minions, the more cards you will have to discard from your deck. Remember, all players lose if an Alliance deck runs out of cards. When a minion is destroyed, discard all tokens from it, place it in the back line, and one Alliance player may draw a card. So we pick who gets to draw a card? Mm -hmm, I guess so. That's every round. We don't like draw. I don't know. Which phase is that for? Uh, it's just explaining 
a concept. It's not even getting into a phase yet. Each player takes mana equal to the mana boost on the current portal. To track your available mana, move your mana token next to the corresponding number. The Horde phase. Summon a number of Horde cards equal to the wave number at the top of the portal. The portal will rotate in the end phase, so the number will change. I was waiting to know what those numbers meant. I should have known it was a rotation thing. And there's the treachery phase. Step one, reveal treachery card. So reveal the top card of the Horde deck and place it face up on top of the Horde discard pile. This is the treachery card for this turn. What if it doesn't have a treachery ability? Uh, ignore any play ability and look to the sides of the treachery card. Are they all treachery? No, so like you flip the top card, it doesn't have a treachery ability. But some cards have a treachery ability, but not every card does. So like if it doesn't have one, do you just... Mm. I don't know. Ignore any playability and look at the sides of the treachery card for any sword or lightning symbols. If there are no symbols, skip to the next step. Otherwise, determine the booster, boosted monster. The boosted monster is the leftmost monster in the lane if the symbols are on the left or the rightmost monster if the symbols are on the right. Then, depending on the symbol, take the action below. If it's a lightning, resolve the treachery ability written on the treachery card. If it's a sword, for the remainder of the turn, the boosted monster gains an attack bonus equal to the number of attack symbols. Gotcha. So, yeah, if it's not a treachery card, nothing happens. No, I mean, if it's a... So, like, if it's got this symbol... Oh, right. Then the monster... It'll still affect most the furthest to the right, right with gets three attack. No, five. Just, it'll be three. It's the number of swords. Oh, the number of swords. Okay, so we have read the rules... Um, now some things that we got right, we actually did have the tracker for mana correct. Um, we got the amount of cards that we draw from our deck, five cards that we said we got that correct. We understood the whole battling monsters and getting their portal and them getting our castle. We, we understood that and the whole modifying of health and attack and defense all of that uh but what we didn't understand was lanes uh minions pillaging basically everything else so and as i said earlier the the iconography that explains what portals you get for what difficulty you're going for and what monsters you get and the different decks and uh, there's just so much to modify the game and you can even modify it even further and make your own custom decks and stuff. So it's, it's not, it's not crazy difficult, but to come up to figure it out on your own, it sure it definitely is. Um, I think the concept though, of winning by defeating the outsider compared to this, destroying portals. That's interesting, but it makes sense. Cause like a portal is a portal, but I almost see the outsider as like, He's Sauron. Like he's yeah, he's it. He's the leader that you gotta you gotta take he's down. He's the one sending the hordes through the portal. Exactly. He's the guy in charge. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Who? I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, that's that was a lot. This game is a lot. But you know what? We're gonna give it our best effort. So we're gonna dive in. Uh, if you want to see our gameplay, as always. Feel free to subscribe on Spotify or on Patreon, and we will come back and we will discuss our thoughts in the game. All right, everyone, we are back. Um... And we were able to successfully win the game with only nine damage to our castle. So, crushed it. Crushed it. Crushed it. But I know that we both have the same feeling because we mentioned it in our gameplay that 
I'm almost worried that we did something wrong because it seemed kind of easy. But I guess we, I mean, we did technically play like the normal deck. We did play the easiest setting. I can see how the game would be really hard because you can't draw cards yeah. very easily, which is quite a limitation. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm wondering if we played correctly just because we coordinated a lot yeah. and talked a lot about, oh, well, I can play this card if you move your guy here and we... Do are you allowed to coordinate to that extent? I feel like you should be able to. Yeah. Like I, mean, I, I don't recall. Game. Yes. And I don't recall reading anywhere saying, because games that don't allow t- table talk are very specific about saying that. Yeah. One of my favorite games, Guards of Atlantis 2. They specifically say that you are not allowed to talk. You can talk as much as you want up until a certain point, And then no one can say anything to uh-huh. anybody. They're very clear about that. I don't recall reading anywhere in the rule book that said you can't discuss with your teammate how how to play. Okay, and okay, and there's this. Take each of the options below any number of times in any order. So I guess that gives a lot of freedom to the player. I think we mm-hmm. were playing it right. That gives a lot of freedom for us to kind of with the talking and moving around. I th- I think that was fine. Yeah. Um. Honestly, I feel like we played it right. It just seemed a little I easy. Because I, I honestly, the, the rule book made me think that the minions were going to get basically constantly a lot of health. And uh, it did happen regularly, but not every round. Right. And it didn't seem hard to manage. Uh-huh. So I never felt overwhelmed like, oh my gosh, my deck is getting so small. Yeah. We both ended with a a ton of cards left in our deck. We weren't even close to getting pillaged to death. Yeah. So that's one thing that did kind of make me feel like, are we doing something wrong? And then just the the out the outsider, um I mean, yeah, was strong, but we both, and maybe we got lucky, I don't know, but we both happened to have strong enough cards and then being able to pair it with other cards to take it down pretty easy. I think it was just luck that we drew this card. Yami. Yumi. Yami. Because any other minion that we've played so far wouldn't have been able to do that. Except for, well... Your bear? Except for my bear. Yeah, my gold jarn. Yeah. My heroic ally. Yeah, he, he was pretty strong. Five damage, six health. And then, if again, if we had the support from other allies. No, I think I think we played it right. It just seemed a little... It seemed a little too easy for me, really. But, yeah. I mean, obviously, the way to fix that is play again with a harder deck. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that's a cool... I, I like that the game did that, is, you know... You kind of get to set your own difficulty level. Yeah, exactly. Um, this was our first co-op game. What was our first co-op game? So that was an interesting experience. I, some people hate co-op. Um, I don't mind it. I think it just kind of depends on how it feels. Yeah. And I thought it was fun to work together and trying to take down the horde. So I enjoyed the co-op aspect of it. I mean, I, we didn't look at the verses rule set but that's a cool that's cool that you, they, they gave that option you can do cooperative you can do versus yeah so yeah but i also have to remember too um you know the the, the weight not that it necessarily stands for difficulty in, in in the sense that we're discussing but the weight on bgg is pretty mid yeah. so the fact that we didn't find it extremely difficult to win I mean, that well, does I think match weight, up with the weight. I don't think weight necessarily refers to ease of winning. I think it just right. well, that's ease what I was, of understanding and like learning to play. But that's what I was just saying is it's not just that I felt like it was easy to win, but it just, it didn't seem difficult in general, like the game. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that, that coincides with the weight. Right. 
I feel like I have mixed feelings about it. Yeah, me too. I don't know. Like, we won, and it just didn't feel satisfying to me. You know, like, it didn't feel like, oh, we made it. You know, like, a lot of other co-op games where you're kind of playing against the board. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that just depends. And you, you like finally do it, and there's like this, like yes, like we right. we did it. But I didn't, I didn't get that from this. I think, obviously, if we'd picked a, a a more difficult deck, yeah, then it could have gotten a lot closer to that. Uh huh. Where we're barely holding on. Yeah. We're losing cards like mad. Our castles getting wrecked. I mean, one difficulty level deck up, and it it could have easily turned out that way. Mm-hmm. So it could have been a lot more clinching had we done it at a more a greater difficulty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I because I agree, I didn't feel that either, and I wanted to, but I don't know. I don't. I'm. I wouldn't go so far as to say that this game doesn't have that. We just didn't play it that way. We never used our castle ability. We didn't. Which we totally. Which is a great ability. Exhaust and pay one mana, choose one, remove two from the castle, remove a damage from an ally, or draw a card. We could have been drawing way more cards. <laughs> yeah. That was so that, that was a frustration for me, is just like I wanted to see what was in my deck. You know, I wanted mm-hmm. to I wanted to get through some cards to kind of see how things played well together, but you just don't draw cards very much. Right. Like you're drawing one around maybe you know right yeah also i feel like all of my guys died after one fight Mm -hmm. and so i didn't really get to see how they worked with other cards or like i didn't see them stick around long enough to get like a really satisfying attack or really satisfying Mm -hmm. block or something i don't know I feel, like used... that, I feel like that was a frustration for me too, yeah. is that, you know, pretty much every card died after one, one fight. And so you don't really get to see any kind of snowball effect. You don't get to see any mm-hmm. fun interplay between the cards. I don't know. Right. And, and it kind of, in that sense, it makes it feel monotonous because you're just constantly, most of the time, you die at the same time. Uh-huh. Your guy dies and you kill, but you manage to kill the enemy. Yeah. And so you're basically just, you die just to stop your castle from getting attacked and then you just draw a card. Uh-huh. So it's just this constant cycling, which, like you're saying, it's just kind of boring. It was fun. It didn't happen very often, but there was a, a couple times when a car, card lasted. Uh-huh. And it, it was fun to have a card remain because now you don't have to spend as much mana to protect yourself. Yes. So, yeah, I agree. But what's crazy is we feel like it was easy and it would have been far easier with the castle using that ability. Uh-huh. So we handicapped ourselves, and it, it still seemed a little too easy. I don't know if it seemed... I mean, I think we just got lucky with the cards we drew. I, I don't think it seemed easy because, I mean, there was... We kind of talked about it as we were playing, but there was a moment where I was like, I don't see how we draw cards. You know, like mm-hmm. these guys are really strong. They were all getting a bunch of armor. They had like six health. And if we can't kill them, we don't get to draw a card. Mm-hmm. And I could I could see in my mind a situation where you're not drawing new cards, therefore you're not playing new guys. Right. But if your guys are dying, then but think it about it. It could have just what I'm saying is it could have just as easily snowballed in the other direction. Where the bad guys get so overwhelming that our castle just dies in like two turns. Maybe, because if we had used the castle, there were multiple times where I had two mana left at the end of a round. Uh Uh-huh. That I could have been like, well, I'm going to spend this two on two cards. Uh Uh-huh. Or I'm going to get rid of two negative health in the castle. So, it would have been, it would have been a bit different. But, you know, it's just... Even if it was a really intense edge of your seat kind of a game, yeah, you know, I just I don't think I'm drawn to it necessarily. 
Mm-hmm. It's one of those games you might feel differently because uh, I'm pretty sure you like deck. Do you like deck building games? I do, yeah. Yeah. So I don't I don't mind it. Um, I don't mind reading cards. It just depends on how they're used. Like I referenced this already in this episode, but I, I one of the games I own is Guards of Atlantis 2. Uh, and the hero that you have there's a lot of text on each card and you have to read it and you have to understand it. But it, it seems there's there's not as many cards and it seems a lot more I just feel more connected with each card. With this game, you had to read each card that was played and you have to understand how it's huge. What, what it wasn't hard by any means, but it just I kind of get tired of it having to be like, okay, now what does this card do? And what does this card do? And what does this card do? And each round it's like you're scanning through all the cards and it was just a lot of step by step by step reading and checking. And I got bored Mm -hmm. of, of that aspect of the game. Yeah. But that's another thing that the more you play, the more familiar you are with the game, the faster that goes and the less you feel like you're referencing game phases and you're just kind of like, right. But even it didn't, it it wasn't hard at all to kind of get into the, into the game phases. But I, the, the amount of times that we had to check each card for the treachery phase and for fighting abilities and, and reading a card when it's played and exhausting a card, there was just so much checking and rechecking and reading that it was kind of pulling me away. Yeah. It was pulling me out of the immersiveness that I, I want in a game. Yeah. It slowed down the game. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yep. I can I can see that, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm wondering if I need to play it a couple more times. I don't know. This 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 experience alone hasn't sold me on the game, but I feel like it has potential and it's the type of game that I usually would really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um I typically like co op games. I like, you know, fantasy themed games yeah. with, you know, defense and attack. Like, it's just my style. I like that. So I, I don't know. I feel like after this game, you know, run through the game, I'm like unsatisfied. But I wonder if, if I played it again, yeah, if that would go, if it would go better, if I'd like mm-hmm. think different things would click. I don't know. I don't know, but that's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, I I would definitely play it again. I'm not going to write it off. Right. But I feel like if I were to play a couple more games and they kind of ended up the same, I'd probably kind of write it off completely. I yes. don't expect it to be that way. Yeah. Like if, if you and I were to play this game again and we tried like the hardest deck uh-huh. or the next level up and we had a more enjoyable experience than it could greatly impact our feeling. Right. But, um, as of right now, I'm not entirely thrilled with the game. And it's one of those games too, where, uh, I feel like it's, it's an easy game to put in a box. Uh, if you like reading cards, you like deck building, uh, like for example, if you like games like Clank, where you're having to read cards, uh, and there's fantasy art and stuff, then you'll like that part. I know my family can't stand to read cards. Even a beautiful, fun game like Wingspan is hard to get them to play, just because <laughs> they have a hard time understanding what cards mean. So with so many cards saying so many different things, if you or your friend group or other people that you know that you are considering playing this game with don't have the intention, attention span, then don't bother. So that's what I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree. It's, you compared to Clang, I think it's more like magic. You know, like mm-hmm. more yeah, like those. Totally. Those it's it's a lot games. more. Like it. It's much more similar to magic than like a deck yeah. building game. Yeah. Um, and so if you like magic or those types of games, 
Yeah. You'll probably enjoy this one. Yeah. It's basically like you're playing co-op magic against a horde is what yes. it is. Yes, that is what it's like. That's that's I mean that's basically that's what the game is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it's a, instead of you against an opponent, an opponent where you each have health. Yep. You're defending a castle which has health and you're playing your minions to fight enemy yep. minions and so that's that's basically it. it's yeah. magic yeah. but with like a tower defense aspect right. to it. Right. And so yeah, if that's your style of game then a lot of people I think love enjoy it, but... magic. It's not hard to see. I mean, magic is one of, it's been around for a Decades. long time. Yeah. And it's just as popular, if not more so. I mean, the Lord of the Rings packs that they just released, mm-hmm. people are going nuts. And I think they, just, they plan on in- incorporating more into their, their world. Uh, so with how popular the game is, a lot of people... I could see them liking this game. Yeah. If, like we're talking about, they can have more of a intense battle versus kind of a more boring, laid back sort of deal. Yeah. Which we, we suspect, I'm hoping we just got lucky. And also maybe the deck we played with was just a little bit too easy for us. Uh-huh. So... Uh, one thing that we didn't talk about, well, we kind of very briefly discussed, but the artwork is awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. It's really, it's, really cool. It, you know, it's on par with those other fantasy yep. card games, you know, where the, it just has really interesting, fun to look at art. For sure. It's it's extremely detailed. I mean, they, they like lighting was heavily involved, which I appreciate in some of these cards, but. I mean, if you, I'm looking at the Onakai minions and it literally looks like orcs out of Mordor. Uh huh. Like it, there's just, uh, there's a whole bunch of different cards from a whole bunch of different races and peoples and different lands. And, and yeah, they're, they're really very detailed, very well done. I mean, uh, the hate bringer, the outsider that we were going against, the artwork reminds me of something that you would see in like World of Warcraft. Uh huh. Stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, production wise, very well done. Very minimal parts and pieces, components and whatnot. It's just like how we were discussing last week when we were playing, uh, Furnace. That game could easily fit into like a Ziploc bag, a quart size Ziploc bag. Yeah. I, I, same thing with this. I mean, not necessarily the mana tracker. It's a little bit long, but you could easily, this is an easy pack game. Yes. Which there's something to be said about that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, production good, art's good. Yeah, I think we just kind of have to give it another go and yes, see how it see how it goes. Yep, I agree. Wasn't super satisfied, but I want to give it another shot. Yeah. Um, as of right now, I think I would give the game like a five point eight. Or a six. Yeah, that's that's probably about about what I would give it. You know, six six point five. Mm-hmm. Which I think is about what I gave Furnace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Six point five. Yeah. 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 I um yeah, I think I think in this particular episode, if you feel like if you play this game before and you've had a lot of fun with it and enjoyable experience, please say something. You know, reach out to us on Twitter, reach out to us on our Patreon Discord, on, you know, you can comment on our YouTube video that we post. You can comment as a review on whatever, on whatever uh, podcast platform you listen on. Just however you want to engage with us, let us know. If, If you're saying you guys have got to try this again, do this and this, you'll love it. Let us know. Because I I feel like we aren't giving this game what it deserves. I mean, the community on BGG, they rated it at 7.6. Far higher than what we're giving it. And the community... uh, 
a lot of people say don't play it with three, which I can see that that makes sense. Uh, most people actually recommend it as a one player game. Really? Which I can kind of see. Yeah. Be, it'd be harder. Uh, maybe because there is the one player deck, so it might balance itself out a little bit. But, uh-huh. uh, but a lot of people still vote. Uh, they say that it's not necessarily best, but they reckon, you know, two players fine. So with two player and what the community is saying, we might be missing something. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if, if you uh, want to let us know, reach out, uh, let us know what you think of the episode. We appreciate you listening, and we hope that you'll join us on our next episode. We'll see you. Bye. Bye.